Hey, what's going on everyone? Today I'm going to show you how to install certificates into an FTP server using Windows Server 2012 and OpenSSL. Okay, so to begin with, I'm just going to show you some of the services and tools that I'm using. I have Windows Server 2012 installed with two services, FTP and Active Directory Certificate Authority. This is essentially going to be responsible for uh, generating certificates from the certificate sign request. I also have OpenSSL installed on this Linux box. I'm going to be doing a variety of things with this program, um, generating or creating private keys, generating certificate sign requests, and also converting file formats from one format to another. Okay. And then I also have FileZilla client installed, um, and I'll be using this to essentially connect to my FTP server. Okay. So to start with, um, just going to connect over to that server just to show you that right now I currently do not have any certificates installed. Okay. You can see the um, FTP data in Wireshark. And of course one of the primary problems with um, you know FTP is that it offers no uh, layer of security by default. Um, you can see the user credentials being sent in clear text. There's the username. There's the password. And if I want to transfer a file uh, from the FTP server, and this is one file that I have on that FTP server, and transfer it over to my machine, you can see that it's transferring right now. I can also see what was downloaded as well. I can follow the TCP stream on Wireshark, and it puts it all together in one nice file where you can see all that information again. All right. So this is obviously a concern and uh, we're going to fix this. So before I start generating or creating the private keys, generating the certificate sign request, I just want to briefly go over um, what's kind of happening, happening here. So when you uh, have the um, uh, role or service of FTP installed on your server and you want to uh, import or use a certificate to encrypt the uh, the data that's being sent over the wire, well, the, the file that it actually expects you to use uh, has this .pfx file extension. Okay, and this is essentially an archive file. It stands for Personal Information Exchange. And what this file contains is more than one cryptographic object. It can, 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 it can contain a uh, certificate chain. It can contain a private key and an identity certificate, or even um, a private key identity certificate and a uh, root certificate. Well, if we have our certificate sign request, and I'm just going to use this as an example, this is a certificate sign request that uh, was downloaded from my um, my Epson printer. All right. And I'm just going to go through this real quickly and use this as an example. Gives us this option to download either in uh, Dur encoding or Base64 encoding. And you can download in any one of these formats. All right. So those are our two certificates. And if we open up properties, we can see that the, the file extension is .cer. So this basically only contains, you know, just just the certificate. It's it's, it's one file, all right. And whether you um, downloaded it in Base64 um, or uh, the Dur encoding, it still um, you know has that .cer extension. And that's not what this uh, server is expecting. It's expecting an archive file with multiple cryptographic objects. Okay. And just in case you're unfamiliar with the different types of coding, if you're um, downloading in uh, Base64, it's basically going to give you the text file. You can open this up in Notepad, and you can actually read things in here, such as the beginning of the certificate and the ending of the certificate. And if you download it in Dur encoding, it's going to give you basically the binary file. And you can see a noticeable difference in here. Okay, basically just a bunch of symbols. All right. 
And depending on um, what the requirements are for your device, server, or application, uh, you might need to download in a uh, different type of encoding or use a different type of encoding. All right. So we're going to create this file with OpenSSL. And I'm going to go over there. Right now. And start by just creating a working directory. So make dir ca. And then in this directory, I'm going to create multiple subdirectories, space 64, certificate sign request, uh, private for private key, and then also a directory for that archive file, pfx. Okay. Now I'm going to generate the private key using the gen r sa tool. I'm going to specify the encryption, AES-256, and I'm going to output that to the location, um, root CA, private, and then FTP, private, key.pem. And I'm going to use a modulus length of 2,048 bits. It's going to ask for a password. type it twice. Okay, and so if I want to display that certificate, I can use the cat command, and there is the certificate, okay, with AES-256 encryption. Here's the be beginning of the certificate. Here is the ending of the certificate. All right. So now I'm going to create a certificate sign request using the rec tool. All right, creating a new certificate uh, with that private key dash key that I just uh, created. So root ca private FTP private key, and I'm going to output that to the location uh, my certificate sign request directory. And then I'm just going to call this FTP uh, certificate sign request.pem. It's going to ask for the password that I used when generating the private key. And here it's going to ask you basically to include all of the information um, that will be included in your certificate, your identity information. So go ahead and just follow the on-screen prompts. Um, so country, U.S. state, uh, location. Uh, organizational name, organizational unit, common name, and then the email address. So okay, so that's all you'll need. You can just uh, hit enter throughout here. Okay, so there's that certificate sign request. And I'm going to open up that file and copy the certificate sign request. And now I'm going to go over to my server, open up IIS, drill down where it says search server. Click on Browse on port 80. That opens up the um, Active Directory Certificate Service. And then request a certificate. Advanced Certificate Request. And go ahead and paste that certificate sign request into where it says the Base64 encoded certificate request. I'm going to select the web server as the certificate template and click Submit. And I'm going to download in that Base64 encoding. Okay. I also need to download the root certificate, which is right here. And make sure you download that in the Base64 encoding as well. All right. Let me just clean up this just a little bit. I can see that 
don't need those two. All right. So if I open up that identity certificate, I can see that there are the details that I included within my certificate sign request. I'm just going to go ahead and change this uh, or rename it to ftp.space64. And this is my, my root certificate. You can see this is a self-signed certificate. It was issued by my CA to my CA. Just go ahead and rename that root dot base 64. And now I need to transfer both of these files back open, uh, back over to my server or machine, I should say, that has OpenSSL installed on it. Because what we're going to be doing now is we're going to be uh, essentially creating this um, pfx file. Okay. So in order to create that file, there are multiple things that we need to include in that single file. All right. First is the um, identity certificate, also the um, the root certificate. And then also we need to include the private key as well. All right, so open SSL, and we're going to use this tool in order to do it, this PKCS12 tool. We're gonna export these three files into a single file using the export command, and start with the identity certificate. So root CA, um, base64 and then FTP. Also need to include the uh, private key, so in or dash in key, and that's included in the root CA private directory, so FTP private key. Then we need to include the root certificate, so dash cert file, it's in root CA base64 and root, and then finally output that um, to a single file in the pfx directory, and we'll call this ftp.certs.pfx. It's going to ask for the password that uh, you used when creating the private key, and then also it's going to ask you for an export password, and this is essentially going to, um, you know, password protect that archive file. Okay. So there's the file now. If we want to take a look at what this looks like, you can see there it is right there. Okay, I'm going to move that back over to uh, my Windows Server 20, uh, 2012. And now I can import that file into my server. It's going to ask for that export password to be able to use this. We're going to select web server or web hosting. And now the file has been successfully imported. Now go over to where you, the name of your FTP server, in my case it's just FTP, and where it says FTP SSL settings, and click open that. And in that drop down list, we're going to select that PFX file. We're going to click on the radio button, require SSL connections, and click apply. Then finally, we're going to just restart the server. We can see this restarting down here. Okay, so now I'm going to have Wireshark open again and go ahead and filter traffic on FTP data. And I'm going to connect a little bit differently this time rather than using the quick connect that I used last time. I'm going to 
create a new site and just type in the IP address of the server and the encryption. I'm going to select require explicit FTP over TLS for the login type. I'm going to ask for a password and here where it says user, I'm going to enter the FTP user. Click connect. Enter the password. And click OK. And now we can see that the certificate is being presented to me. It has all the cryptographic material in here. I can see the uh, subject of the certificate that has all of the information that I included in my certificate sign request. I'm going to accept the certificate. Okay, now the connection has been established. And I'm going to go ahead and take that file that's on my um, FTP server, transfer it over. You can see that it's transferring. And this time, I'm going to follow the TCP stream on this new connection. And you can see a noticeable difference between this connection, right? and the first connection that we made that didn't have any certificates on it. Okay, you can see all of the user credentials and what they downloaded. And in this case, all we see is basically at the start of the stream, um, you can see uh, the certificate details that are being transmitted. But after that certificate is essentially being used, everything after that is encrypted the user credentials, its name, password, and also the file that was being transferred is also being encrypted. Okay? So that pretty much does it. And, um, or for installing certificates into an FTP server. Hopefully this has been helpful. Have a good day.